Hey, we are gearing up closer and closer to Sunday night football. And you know what? I'm already giving the Dolphins the early nod because of you. You've been typing me in the comments all week long to show your love for the Dolphins. So let's not stop now if you think the Dolphins are going to beat the Eagles. And if you want them to beat the Eagles like I do, hit those comments, type me right now, and let's get another edition of Dolphins Today going. Here we go. As we get closer and closer to Sunday night football, I keep racking my brain saying, Jake, what do we get? What do the people need to know? And I keep coming back to this because I know we talked about it a little bit earlier in the week, but as Sunday gets closer, I am thrilled and also full of anticipation at the potential of Jeff Wilson returning to the lineup, especially when you consider how beat up the Dolphins running back room is. And listen, Raheem Mostert has been incredible the entire season. In fact, coming off a huge game against the Panthers, he was the AFC Player of the Week. But you got to have a two-headed monster at the running back position in Mike McDaniel's offense. And yes, Devon Achan was on a record pace as a rookie before he went on IR. We saw a little bit from Savan Ahmed last week in the win over the Panthers, but I'm still of the belief that Jeff Wilson provides a little extra oomph to that running back room, coupled with the fact that Chris Brooks is going to be gone for several weeks with that injury he suffered against the Panthers. I'm excited, and I keep seeing more and more stuff on the old Twitter sphere or X or whatever you want to call it about Jeff Wilson eyeing his return. Take a look at this from David Fiorona saying, Wilson was prepared enough to play last week against the Panthers, meaning he was healthy enough. Remember, he came off IR, he started practicing, but the Dolphins just didn't have a roster spot for him on the 53. They wanted to use that for Robert Jones instead. Now, one week later, Sunday night football, a national showdown, AFC versus NFC, everything you want to add to this juicy matchup, Jeff Wilson could be a guy that makes a major impact for the Dolphins. He's a proven player in this league. Take a look at his stats from just a year ago. I mean, these are not, this is not a small sample size. This is a guy that can tote the rock. 176 carries, 860 yards, Nearly five yards a carry with five touchdowns. And we've seen what Raheem Mostert has done. We've seen what Devon A. Chan has done. Heck, even Savan Ahmed and Chris Brooks. Mike McDaniel's offense, and Frank Smith for that matter, lends itself to big play running backs. And the Dolphins are already number one in the National Football League in running the ball. And adding a guy like Jeff Wilson will only bode well for the Aqua and Orange. So, the discussion is out there, and I've already started to dance around it a little bit, so I need to hear from you. Who should be RB2 Sunday night against the Eagles? Obviously, Raheem Mostert's our guy, but that RB2, should it be Jeff Wilson or Savan Ahmed? Go ahead and type JW for Jeff Wilson or SA for Savan Ahmed. Now, I want to get into a little bit more injury news as we get closer and closer to that showdown against the Philadelphia Eagles, and it's positive injury news, so that is a great thing. But first, I got to tell you all about who's making today's show possible, and that is Prize Picks. Listen, guys, I've been telling you about Prize Picks for weeks, and I think the best way to summarize it is I'm like somewhat addicted to prize picks because it's the most exciting and easiest way to play daily fantasy sports. So how does it work, Jake? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. It's very, very simple. You pick more or less on a player's projected stat line for any given game. So you guys know I do it every Sunday for the Dolphins. I got burned a little bit this week on Monday Night Football. I'm not going to lie. So how about a big bounce back week for me on Sunday? I think the top one there is stealing. I'm picking more on Tyreek Hill's touchdowns. Now these touchdowns can be receiving, running, Throwing, whatever it is, Tyreek Hill just has to get in the end zone once against the Eagles, so I'm picking more there. I think Jalen Waddell is 
due for a breakout game receiving the ball. And the Eagles secondary is banged up. We told you earlier this week, six different starting secondaries in six different games. It's time for Jalen Wilde to exploit that weakness of the Eagles. So I'm picking more with his receiving yards. And this one's a little bit tough. I was torn on this one, but I had to pick less for Jalen Hurts' projected stat total. He was a shell of himself in that game against the Jets. He committed several, several turnovers. I believe four was the number. Don't quote me on that. But he was not himself. And you know what? Let's just keep that snowball going. So I'm picking less for his projected passing yards as well. And that's how it works. Those are my prize picks for Sunday's game against the Philadelphia Eagles. And don't waste any more time. Join me on the prize picks train. Here's how it works. You go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. That's prizepicks.com slash CLNS. And for being a Dolphins fan, subscribing to Dolphins today, we're giving you a $100 deposit match. And you know we always make it easy on you. We put that link in the comments and the description is again. But just in case you stop paying attention, listen up. Here it is one more time. The last time I'm giving it to you, prizepicks.com slash CLNS for a $100 deposit match. Prizepicks.com slash CLNS, promo code CLNS. I told you we'd get to some more positive news, and now Jalen Phillips played on Sunday, but he's been one of those guys that every week we're checking the injury report. Is he in there? He's missed some time, but he was a full participant in this week's practices, which I think is crucial because getting pressure on Jalen Hurts is going to be paramount to the Dolphins' defensive game plan, and there is no doubt about it, if you know what I mean, that Jalen Phillips makes an impact when he's in the game. He's missed three games this season against the Patriots, Bills, and Giants. Obviously, that Bills game is the only loss of the season for the Dolphins. And Andrew Van Ginkle has played really well in his absence, so we got to give him some credit as well. But take a look at his numbers from last year, playing in all 17 games. He was a durable edge rusher for the Dolphins, seven sacks. And in his rookie year, he had eight and a half sacks, also playing in all 17 games. So this is a guy that can help the Miami Dolphins defense who is already, and I would say that's their strength as, as a defense. Their strength is getting to the quarterback, getting home. They're tied for third with 30, or I'm sorry, 23 sacks as a team through six games. So that is the strength of this defense. And if Jalen Phillips can be in the lineup, he can add one more weapon to the passing pass rush attack for Vic Fangio and his defense. So speaking of Vic Fangio, he made some comments earlier this week regarding some of the banged up players in the secondary, speaking specifically about Xavier Howard. That's been a storyline we've been watching. We've been keeping you updated on that. And good news on this front is that Xavier Howard practiced in a limited capacity, and he will practice in a limited capacity, I should say, today, and remains day-to-day. So we've been talking about that all week, and we know how good Xavier Howard is. He's arguably the best corner on this team, and he's going to have his hands full because we know how good A.J. Brown is, but the numbers, they speak for themselves. Four-time Pro Bowler, two-time All-Pro, led the NFL in interceptions in both 2018 and 2020. And this is a guy that's been getting it done this year already, the unquestioned leader of the secondary. So I know I'm praying, you're praying that Xavier Howard can give it a go, and we will continue to monitor that story as it progresses. Now, the Dolphins secondary. They were exposed a little bit against Buffalo, and I think this is their toughest task since that game against Buffalo. You know, make no mistake about it, the two opponents that followed the Buffalo win, they were inferior. They were the Giants and the Panthers, all right? Sometimes the schedule lends itself to a little get right, get back game. But this is not that, as they say. Sunday night football will be a tough, tough ask for the secondary. And it's important that Xavier Howard, if he can't go, somebody else steps up. Because A.J. Brown, just like Stephon Diggs did, can expose this Dolphins defense if they're not careful. So it'll be an interesting thing to watch. And part of that connection with A.J. Brown, of course, is Jalen Hurts, who has had his struggles. There is no doubt about it. Jalen Hurts coming off his worst game of the season. But as a whole, this Eagles offense just, at times, don't get me wrong, at times they've looked prolific, sure. And they're 5-1 and one for a reason. They're a tremendous team. 
but this has been a tough year for Jalen Hurts. The seven interceptions compared to just the seven touchdowns, those are not what he is accustomed to putting up as far as numbers. Look at 2022, 22 pass touchdowns compared to just the eight turnovers, also the 13 rush touchdowns. So you know he's a threat with his legs as well. And you know who agrees with me? The Dolphins defensive coordinator, Vic Fangio. I love this quote. He just, Vic, you got to love Vic Fangio just in his old school defensive coordinator mentality at the podium saying he has no weaknesses. That's it. That's the scouting report on Jalen Hurts. He's got no weaknesses. So with a, a little bit of a banged up secondary, it'll be so paramount, as I mentioned, for the Dolphins to get pressure on Jalen Hurts because if he has time, you know he's sitting back. You know he's sitting back and finding his guy, A.J. Brown, who has been on a tear in his last four games, 131 yards against Tampa Bay in week three. He's been over 100 every single game, the 131. it's I mean, we're accustomed to seeing these kind of numbers with Tyreek Hill, who is the only receiver that has more receiving yards than A.J. Brown. So one of the many compelling areas that I'll have my eye on. And one way for the Dolphins defense, this is a challenge. Look, we challenged them last week too. We said we need to get set pressure on Bryce Young. We said the same thing in the week before against the Giants. They knocked Daniel Jones out of the game. Not intentionally, obviously. Don't, 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 don't get at me in the comments. I'm just saying that they got pressure on both those quarterbacks. So that was our challenge. But our challenge this week, Reba's challenge for the Dolphins. I know that this is going to really get them motivated and that they're tuning in to see what my challenge is. But I want to see this defense force some turnovers. The Dolphins are kind of an anomaly when it comes to the turnover stat because they've actually committed more turnovers than turnovers they force, and that is typically not a recipe for success. However, of course, the Dolphins have been able to overcome it with that quick strike offense. So I want that to change this week because the Eagles might be the toughest team the Dolphins have played to this point, and you can't make a living not winning the turnover battle. Let me figure out a better way to say that. You can't make a living turning the ball over and not forcing turnovers. So if you're with me, call your shot. How many turnovers do the Dolphins force on Sunday? I said I need at least two. I need at least two by this Dolphins defense to start getting a little bit more aggressive and giving that offense an opportunity to continue to excel and, and win the field position battle by creating those turnovers. So let me know in the comments, call your shots. Want to thank everybody for tuning in today. It's always a blast on Dolphins today. And you know we've got an electric watch party ready to go for Sunday night football. And you know who helps make those watch parties happen? The Aqua Club. So shout out to the Aqua Club. They're one of a kind. Sunday night's watch party is your next chance to join the Aqua Club with a $100 super chat. You know Chad Jones, Lord Buddy Bear, David Breecount, and our newest member, Mystical Liv for being in the Aqua Club. It's, it's one of the most exciting days of their life, probably the most proud days of their lives as well. Maybe besides, you know, for birth of their first child or, or marriage or anything like that, joining the Aqua Club ranks right up there. So this could be you. Join me on Sunday for a Dolphins Sunday night special spectacular watch party. It's going to be fantastic. Shout out to producer Smitty, one of a kind, the realist. Love you guys. Looking forward to Sunday night football. As always, fins up. Go Dolphins. See ya.